first few years that I worked at DOHS. <laughs> um, he was kind of this elusive character that had social worked around here and there and had a good reputation. And um, I met him in Olympia at some training. And Rory introduced us. And later Rory talked him into coming to work in Port Angeles. Good job, Rory. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I can still picture us in that training room, you know, when I first met him. And, you know, my first impression was, whoa, tall guy. <laughs> and, uh, well, you know, he seems nice. And uh, then eventually he ended up working in our office. And it didn't take me very long to figure out that he seemed kind and nice. And, you know, he seemed to be doing a good job. And, then I realized he had flower photos everywhere that he had taken, and I knew right then he was okay. <laughs> that really did it. Um, well, he turned out to be one of the really good guys. You know, a co-worker with sensitivity and skills, and truly one of the finest people to ever cross my path. Mm -hmm. um, in our I practiced this, so I wasn't going to cry. I don't think I could pull it off. In our, crazy GSHS world, you know, you get really close to your co-workers. And uh, if you're lucky, like a lot of us are, you really become true friends. And uh, <coughs> Philip really was that. And, uh, you know, always will be for all of us. You know, he considered us our work family, his work family. And he did his best to help us be one. He was our ringleader when we needed to save ourselves from a dragon lady. Uh -huh. And we did it. And you did it. You know, he uh, kept us entertained with silly cartoons and thought-provoking articles on the bulletin board. And he, uh, there were new decorations for every holiday. <laughs> He believed in potlucks and sitting around the table having conversation with your friends and somehow squeezing us with his wide angle lens all into group photos. Uh, he would he gave wonderful generous gifts. You know, I got calendars with birds on them and books about dogs and then there were the little blinky things and the wind up toys. <laughs> and, uh, and once when I was leaving to go on a road trip on vacation, I got this lovely rubber shark. Phyllis gave our clients at DSHS the gifts of respect and fairness. And I inherited his caseload after he retired. And, uh, and I still get queries from his clients of concern and caring for him. Just the other day, I met with one of the few clients that he had warned me about as was going to be quite difficult, and he was. Um, but at the end of our conversation, this man started talking about Philip with tears in his eyes and what a wonderful man he was. And this was from someone who was probably one of his more difficult work relationships. And he was such an eloquent writer, I can even read his case notes and <laughs> admire his gift with words. Yeah. Here's an example of some notes from a client intake that I just came across the other day. He is casually groomed in mock fatigues, tied off at mid-thighs. Hygiene is fair. He is withdrawn in posture and response until eye contact is made. Then he expresses himself with more comfort. Speech is blunted and reserved with a weariness in tone. He expresses wanting to find good care and perhaps medication and be able to hold down a job to validate his sense of self-support. He reports a negative encounter at the mental health center, which he did not want to discuss fully. His military presentation is somewhat at odds with his presentation of overall fragility. His responses are generally focused and appropriate, though he is puzzled by his own medical mental health situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
but now it's just a case now. Okay, here's the part where I'm going to start crying again. I remember the moment that he told me that he had cancer. He was, you know, next door, sitting in his chair, in that cubicle right next door, cup of tea, turtleneck, comfy sweater, <laughs> you know, and uh, I had to just give him a big hug and kiss that bald head. And, you know, then I watched as the days went on, and he just kept living his life. I know. You know? I feel really fortunate to have seen Philip several times in the last couple of weeks of his life. And he was still positive. He was thankful for his cozy home and his ability to still be independent, very grateful for the care he was receiving. And then, for his last couple days, he just slept peacefully away with his dear Carol by his side and all of you in his heart. So, I told him I was going to miss him and uh, that I was really sad that his body was failing, but that uh, his spirit was strong and was going to always live on. And you know, guys, he's here with us today. He's smiling, he's playing his banjo. <laughs> so, uh, you know, celebrate his life, because he really always celebrated all of you. <laughs>